Qué bien que nos acompañan de regreso aquí en otro episodio más, el número 16 de Empodérate de Chicanos por la Causa, un espacio que nos encanta compartir cada jueves con ustedes, donde nos llenamos de tantas buenas este, ideas, recomendaciones, donde nos empoderamos juntos y aprendemos tanto de las similitudes y de las experiencias de tantos líderes en nuestra comunidad. Y uno de ellos que tenemos el gusto, de una de ellas que tenemos el gusto el día de hoy, la doctora Mariela Diócares, que viene directamente desde Tucson esta tarde. Muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos. Gracias por invitarme. Es un honor estar con ustedes. Sí, bienvenida. Doctor D, ¿cómo te dicen? Doctor D, los Dr. grandes. Dr. D. Yes. Uh, que yo, de, pues por ahorita voy a empezar con diciendo que envidia a los estudiantes de Toltecali que tienen a Dr. D como principal. Eh, desde antes de que lleguemos a hablar de tus estudiantes y okay. de su escuela, queremos empezar a conocer un poquito más de ti y de tu persona. ¿Cómo es que llegaste a ser la persona que eres de hoy? ¿Nos puedes platicar un poquito más de tus orígenes? ¿Cuáles son tus orígenes? ¿De dónde eres? ¿Y cómo llegaste aquí? Ok. So, yo nací en Argentina, uh -huh. en Bahía Blanca, y cuando... Tenía cinco años, mi familia decidió que íbamos a venir a Estados Unidos, así que inmigrante, primera generación. Wow. Um, y siempre el mensaje fue en nuestra familia la educación, ¿no? Que la importancia de la educación, que como mujeres, porque somos tres mujeres, qué importante era que salgamos adelante, que agarremos los títulos, por decir. Uh -huh, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. so eso siempre fue el mensaje. So, la educación es una... Ha sido algo que ha guiado mi carrera uh -huh, en cualquier uh -huh. aspecto y obviamente la salud mental, que es algo que como latinos todavía estamos tratando de encontrar nuestro lugar Así y, es. you know, how to deal with it, what to uh -huh. do with it. So. Yeah. Sí, yeah. Y, pero llegaste de Argentina y te, se mudaron a California. A California. Y ahí viviste toda tu vida hasta que te viniste, viniste a Arizona. No, so de California vinimos a Arizona, después a Texas, oh. después a México por unos años, después oh, wow. he estado por todos lados. ¿Y cómo fue esa transición, uh, Dr. D, este, de, de, de empezar de nuevo con nuevas amistades en un nuevo ambiente y con diferentes este, comunidades con, y países uh -huh. en general? Uh, did you start again? Was it dreadful or was it exciting? You know, when you're young, it's not great. <laughs> right? <laughs> you live on your family. Yes. Uh, your family yes. your life you have to start all over again. Um, pero de una manera u otra, yo creo que eso, it built my resilience. Mm -hmm. sí. Right? Me enseñó que tenía que ser líder. Tenía, si quería tener un... Like, if I wanted it to be a good year, then I needed to take the reins and have control and say, oh, okay, you know what? Yeah. This is what I need to do. Because yeah. siendo inmigrante, you know, tuve que hacer summer school porque no, no sabía el idioma. Así que mm -hmm. inmediatamente, okay, tienes que repetir clases, tienes que hacer esto, tienes que hacer el otro. So it wasn't even a thought. It was, that's what the school said. So um, the interesting thing was cuando fuimos a México, me gradué a los 17 años, y en un año hice dos de carrera porque originalmente no iba a ser psicología, iba a ser educación. Mm. Y de alguna manera u otra, acabó siendo psicología y educación. <risa> ¿Y en qué parte de México sí. viviste? Estuvimos en Montemorelos. En Morelos. Oh, yes. Morelos, ok, yes. ok. No me ha tocado ir todavía a Morelos, um, pero... No, pero he escuchado que hay una muy bonita esta exposición del Día de los Muertos que hacen. Este, mm. con este, ¿cómo se llaman? Las eh, Catarinas. 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 Justo estábamos hablando de las Catarinas. <risa> Ayer. Y sí. este, y los, uh, las flores silpa, sil, silpasuchis. Chul. Cispasuchil. Cispasuchil. Yo no voy a intentar. No. Decir. Sí, there we go. <risa> este, um, so, cuando te mudabas a diferentes comunidades, este, me pregunto, eh, <coughs> La educación era primordial, pero me pregunto, ¿cómo te, cómo te ajustabas a, a, a esa comunidad? Uh, ¿Were you a chameleon? Um, do, you, did, were you, you feel that like you stood your ground and, and you had already set your values and everything? Uh, or, or did you have to figure it out as you... Bueno, como nos íbamos como una familia misionera, uh -huh. íbamos a una iglesia, mm. ya sabíamos que en esa comunidad íbamos a estar trabajando. Ah, okay. So, íbamos a servir. Sí, okay, toda okay. mi niñez, my whole life has been about serving and uh -huh. helping and supporting and, you know, how can I help you reach whatever it is that you're reaching? Wow. So, 
ya sabía qué comunidad iba a ser, ya sabíamos, you know, who, what school I was going to go to, mm -hmm. who was going to be surrounding me, but as a family, it was always about our family because we were the only ones moving. Sí. Nobody would move with claro. us. So, sí, 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 sí. yeah, it was, it was good to have that push to get to know people and be an extrovert. Mm. And now after a certain age, you become an introvert. And right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already used all that yeah. energy. Sí, me puedo conectar con eso porque yo también crecí en una zona chiquita. Yo me mudé mucho, pero me tuve que mudar mucho de escuela. Yo, my, my, my little world in my childhood fue California, Arizona y Nogales, Sonora. Uh -huh. uh, y Agua Prieta, Sonora. So, uh, en esas little places siempre me tuve que mudar, pero, um, y como dices, tienes que eh, aprender cómo encajas, dónde no tienes que encajar, uh -huh. dónde hablas, dónde no hablas, dónde te, 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 te acomodas, dónde, no te, dónde le sacas la vuelta a ciertas áreas. Uh -huh. And then you get to a certain age in your adulthood where you're like, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Been there, done that, yes. to that whole process. Ya, ya, ya aprendí lo que tenía que aprender esa experiencia. Así es. ¿Cómo fue la transición a, a mental health? So, yo Salud sabía mental. que, yeah, I mean, realmente, if you really think about it, it wasn't that big because yo sabía que tenía que ayudar a alguien, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That was for sure. So, una de las maneras iba a ser o educación o salud mental, mm -hmm. en específicamente psicología. Y ahora son las dos. <laughs> es una combinación, because why not? Exactly, right? <laughs> Let's go big. Uh -huh. um, so, para mí siempre tuve mucha curiosidad de why do people act the way that they do, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. why is it that as Latinos we excuse behaviors when in reality there's depression, there's anxiety, there's sí. all these things that we don't talk about and mm -hmm. we just say, así son. Mm -hmm. Se le va a pasar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Es que you know, es floja o es porque oh, no quiere que las cosas como preferimos a llamarlo de esa manera que así son o deal with that family member como son mm -hmm. en vez de decir vamos a averiguar una solución si me ha tocado yes. ver eso um, ¿cuál es la mejor transición para para cre crear concientización con la familia sobre el tema en general mental health ¿cuál es, crees que es lo? yo creo que primero es proveer a safe space to talk about mm. it, right? Um, como inmigrantes y los estudios, you know, they back this up. We have second and third generation trauma that mm -hmm. we bring with us. Mm -hmm. See, that is well known. Right. Um, so we come with this trauma. We have to deal with the trauma. And then we come into a new country and it's like, you got to fit in. Somehow yeah. you need to fit in. And we don't. I can honestly say I, I don't fit in. I don't fit in with my Latinos. I don't fit in with, you know, this culture, so I have to create my own culture. Mm -hmm. So um, first, let's talk about it. Let's let's address that elephant in the room. There, We do have anxiety. We do have depression, right? Um, y no ayuda que, you know, discipline has a big part in it mm -hmm. as well, right? So... Que disciplinaría las cosas, como disciplina en, en la cultura latina es algo mm -hmm. muy grande. Uh, que podemos experimentar, so that makes a good point on that. And then we're expected to just work, 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 because we're trying to achieve the American dream. So, yo me acuerdo cuando crecía, mis padres, nosotros todos trabajamos siete días a la semana. So, you never have that time for self-care. Sí. You mm -hmm. never have that time to just do you. So, um, let's start with those conversations. Let's talk about it's okay to address this And then, what are the resources? What is the help that we can get? Siendo una mm -hmm. latina, una profesional, eh, en, una doctora en este aspecto, um, ¿cuáles han sido maneras que tú has podido uh, adaptar cosas que has aprendido um, y practicar? practicarlas en, en, en tu familia con, que es latina o que, diferent, que tiene diferentes entendimientos? ¿Cómo lo has adoptado tú? Well, I'm going to be completely honest. <laughs> <laughs> Por favor. Um, definitivamente es algo que todavía todos los días tiene que ser intencional, mm -hmm. right? Mis hijos me ayudan. Um, mi equipo en la escuela me ayuda de, okay, I tell them that they need to take time off and they're like, well, you need to like... 
También. Yeah. Help to the pot. <laughs> yes, you definitely need to do the same thing. Lead by example, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, trato de hacerlo mejor, pero de, definitivamente reconozco que es algo que va a ser por toda mi vida que voy a necesitar ser intencional de decir, ok, uh, por ejemplo, ahora mi práctica es a fin de mi día, por lo menos 30, 45 minutos, voy a leer un libro que me trae placer, me, me ayuda a descargarme de mi día. Mm. Eso es intencional, porque mm -hmm. antes no lo hacía y me he dado cuenta que ahora que digo, no, I'm going to do it every night, it's a whole different ball game. Yo que el ejemplo que hace tiempo nos dijo otro, este, otro, otro, otro invitado, el hecho de que él es dueño de un restaurante y un día este, lo cierra oh, y mm -hmm. luego se va a pescar. Juan Robles. Es la, es, no, él nació en México, pero llegó Ajá. aquí muy pequeño. Entonces, su papá, siendo primera generación también, entonces le llama, le dice, ¿cómo que dejaste a él? Inconcebible para el uh -huh. papá, ¿no? Dejaste de trabajar en tu negocio para irte a pescar. Y dice, uh -huh. sí, porque this is my mental health time and sí, this is where uh -huh. I consciously uh -huh. am making to be uh -huh. able to do better and be better. Sí. Uh -huh. Entonces, se me, se me hizo algo tan increíble uh -huh. porque ese tipo de conversaciones claras tienen que hacer y no son fáciles. Sí, no. Uno no. como hijo o este, eventu eventualmente con este, nuestra, cualquier generación que sea, sí. tener una, uh -huh. una conversación clara para decir es que este es tiempo para mí porque uh -huh. lo necesito. Uh -huh. O yo ahorita no, no, no puedo con esto que me estás trayendo Give me a moment, I'll be there. Pero ahorita sí. no, 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 no puedo. Exacto. Yeah. Una cosa que me ha ayudado a mí, si puedo compartir, yeah. como, como compartiste ahorita en esta uh, del, del el libro, uh, cuando manejo para acá los jueves, todas las semanas, yo he estado en unos cuantos accidentes, me han hecho rear end. So, there's anxiety that's in my body. Mm -hmm. hay, hay, hay ansiedad en mi cuerpo porque siempre que me subo al carro, empiezo con mis síntomas de ansiedad. Entonces... Para lo que estoy haciendo ahora es encontré un, una área de sacatito. <ríe> so, llego me, y de hecho está aquí a un ladito, es afuera del, del building del um, ah, sí, Jones. Enfrente de la casa Jones. Un sí, sí, enfrente de la casa Jones está un pedacito de, saca, uh -huh. de sacatito y a mí me, me ayuda mucho grounding uh -huh. uh, to get my, out of my anxiety and into my body. Y de este, me, me doy cinco minutos, siempre me aseguro que pueda durar cinco minutos nomás rapidito, me quito los zapatos, camino en el sacate por ahí para abajo, por ahí para abajo y ya me vengo a la mini. <ríe> yes. That works. Yeah. Yeah. Muchas gracias uh, porque nos dices un poquito de eso. Ya sé que eh, nos ayuda como cuando estudias algo como que you're a doctor, ¿no? Tienes toda la experiencia y, y aún todavía tienes que trabajar intencionalmente en este, um, en este tema de la salud mental. Y yo creo que es lo que tenemos que uh, entender como una comunidad, que la salud mental no es una cosa que se arregla y se olvida. Mm -hmm. Es una cosa que se, se arregla trabaja. y que en día con día se van haciendo yes. cositas, cambios. Um, porque yo miré en tu, en tu um, biography que um, you self-proclaimed advocate. Eres una feroz defensora de programas de bienestar mental con énfasis en intervenciones informadas sobre el trauma. Mm -hmm. um, ¿Por qué es algo que te has convertido en esa uh, advocate y feroz defensora? Primarily because in the communities that we live with, we've experienced so much trauma, mm -hmm. right? Um, the school that I help lead All of our students have experienced trauma. We all experienced trauma. Mm -hmm. COVID was a huge traumatic was. event for all of us. It so, was. ¿qué cosa más importante decirle a mi equipo? You know what? Quiero que se sientan confident in trauma-informed practices so that we're able to help our students, so that we're mm -hmm. able to mm -hmm. serve our students effectively and understand why their behaviors are happening, right? Mm -hmm. um, I tell my team very often, before our students walk through the door, they probably already had a full morning of mm -hmm. whatever they had to deal with. And now they're coming to school hoping to learn. And so we need to be very mindful of what they're coming with and what kind of spaces are we providing for our students, not just for our students, but for each other as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the things that um, we're doing with the team this year, we partnered with a school crisis company and mm -hmm. they're actually coming in every month Fantastic. and providing a space for the team to just process 
what our month has been like, what are some tools that we can use that same day or the next day to help not just each other, but our students as well. So to me, when I started last year, I was told, okay, what is your school going to be known for? And I'm like, Mm -hmm. "Mm, no, no doubt for sure. (laughs) So we are the school of social emotional wellness. Which is great. Yo yo me regresé. Si me pudiera regresar a high school. (laughs) I would be registered in your class. Y nos tuvimos el, la el, visita. La, el honor de yes. tener la visita. Y you have, tienes todos estos um, um, motivational quotes. Yes. Uh, que son bonitos de ver, ¿verdad? So, de, to, de solamente tener una atmósfera así en tu lugar um, puede ser un cambio positivo para nuestra salud mental. Yeah, and we offer yoga. Um, el consejero de la high school the classes, the mindfulness, the classes, the mm. coma, how to face stress, what to do, how to have healthy relationships. And that to me was very important because it could have been any teacher, but our school counselor is the most prepared, sí. the best person to be able to teach that. And all of our teachers, they start the day with at least 15 to 20 minutes of some kind of mindfulness or social emotional related activity, which to me as a principal was highly important because We're setting the tone for the claro, day. Claro, claro. Right? Le estás dando el, el ejemplo uh-huh. a, a los... Platícanos sobre las comunidades que apoyan a través de Toltecali High School. It has been around and stapled in in Tucson, South Tucson, I South want to Tucson, say, yes. for, for, for many years, probably uh-huh. since the 19, late 1990s. Um, tell us about the communities that you serve um, and also how are the families and the students taking that shift? Mm-hmm. Um, of, mm-hmm. of mindfulness? It's a battle. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that they're becoming more accustomed to this is how we do things now at Totecali. Wow. Right? Um, Qué bueno. Yeah, it's a positive thing, but we still need more of that community buy-in. We still need to have those honest conversations, Mm -hmm. um, invite more of our community into our school and say, hey, this is what it can look like. It doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be, Mm -hmm. I'm here to judge you. Mm -hmm. I'm here to support you. That's the message we want to give. Porque yo creo que a lo mejor no puedo decir por todos, pero lo que yo he visto es de que en la cultura latina y hispana se da... Um, puede que pudo haber sido por protección uh-huh. eh, un, una mentalidad de decir no enseñes tus scars yes. no enseñes que uh-huh. no lo puedes mantener todo no enseñes que, eres que, no, que eres débil yeah. no enseñes que no puedes um, yo creo que ha sido un mensaje y un comunicado que tras generaciones nos ha mantenido sobreviviendo yes. porque es muy necesario que podamos um, eh, Hacer recognize que no es, las generaciones pasadas no tuvieron el privilegio uh-huh. de sentarse y uh-huh. decir, ahora puedo, puedo hacer tío con lo que está pasando en mi cuerpo uh-huh. porque llegué temprano de mi trabajo. Teníamos a los campesinos desde la mañana hasta en la noche. Yeah. Y luego a los estudiantes, como la película de A Thousand Miles, que um, se iban a la, al campo en la mañana uh-huh. y luego de ahí a la escuela y luego de ahí al campo. O sea... Yes. Somos, estamos en un lugar completamente diferente, pero ahora ya podemos tener este momento de decir, no hay, no hay que tener miedo de decir, I'm still strong, estoy fuerte, uh-huh. pero algo pasó y no sé cómo lidiar. Yes. So, eh, de este se hace eh, la necesidad de empezar a eh, quebrar esos estigmas, pero también tener la... Gracia de nuestros, uh, tener la gracia a nuestros padres y de decir, you couldn't, no podías, pero hay que hacerlo ahora. Uh-huh. Um, y eso me lleva a preguntarte, ¿nos puedes platicar más así como, como directora del Top de Cali? Um, ¿Cómo son maneras que están rompiendo esta barrera? Porque este tipo de emotional wellness puede ser adoptado por muchas otras escuelas académicas. Y hay un... Hay un como llamado del público uh-huh. diciendo las escuelas nos están enfocando en todo lo que necesitan nuestros kids, a uh, nuestros estudiantes. So, ¿Cómo es que ustedes están quebrando eso? Bueno, well, realmente no es solamente Totecali, es todo uh-huh. el distrito, ¿verdad? Right? Sí. Um, nosotros, de Chicanos por la Causa. De Chicanos uh-huh. por la Causa, yes. We're just more intentional because uh-huh. that uh-huh. is 
my focus as the principal. Sí. So, um, definitivamente tenemos, nuestras maestras están más, um, they've gotten more training on how to have difficult conversations, right? Mm -hmm. um, with the understanding that if a teacher isn't in the right mindset to have the conversation, there's going to be staff support to be able to help out. But we're very honest about what we're feeling. I am the kind of principal that has my door open and students mm -hmm. just come to me and if they just want to hang out or they're having a, they just need a time out, we have, they can come to my office, they can come to the council. Like we have It's not your typical places. principal office, no, I want to say. Because <laughs> when you used to be called to the principal's office. You did not want to go for a No, yes. but this one is such a relaxing place to just <laughs> sit down and say, you know what's happening to me today? See. Well, I have a group of girls and they're like, miss, we have tea. <laughs> <laughs> Pero creo que también una cosa que a veces tomamos por, por hecho. Entonces, la, el Distrito Escolar de Chequenos por la Causa consta de tres uh, preparatorias, uh -huh. una aquí en Phoenix y dos en Tucson. Uh -huh. Eh, pero they're culturally relevant mm -hmm. to, um, in the instruction to the communities and the activities that they make. Yes. Entonces, cuando entras a Toltocali, está llena de colores y unos murales hermosísimos mm -hmm. yes. y, este, y llena de, de, de líderes que representan y con los que los estudiantes se pueden mm -hmm. identificar. Uh -huh. ¿no? en, en general, sobre las experiencias que han tenido para antes de llegar a esta mañana yes. y que los puedan inspirar um, para cuando estén estudiante, estudiando a donde donde quieren llegar, uh -huh. el apoyo que existe para poder a, a darles este, el siguiente paso uh, después de que dejen Toltecali y puedan yes. ingresar ya sea a una escuela de trade school o, este, o bien a una universidad uh -huh. uh, local o, o, o nacional. Es, es el apoyo que, 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 que lleva. Y ahora, teniendo a ti como líder con esa experiencia sobre este mental health este es, hace todo el círculo muy uh -huh. bien muy completito para toda la familia yeah definitivamente we have to focus on the whole child right it's sí. not just about academics it's not we have to we have to address that need that mental health need and um, it's important as uh -huh. a school we need to the students are spending more time with us than they do at home uh -huh. sí so best place for us to be able to help. Sí, sí, no, qué, qué, qué cosa tan buena tener esa, tener una directora que piense en eso. Sí, ¿verdad? <risa> <risa> Hablando de, me pregunto, este, Dr. D, eh, aunque tu inicios fue considerar una de las dos cosas, ¿no? Este, mental health o este, o educación. Y ahora, este, ya te tenemos como líder de educación. ¿Cuál ha sido la experiencia, este, quizás, uh, más emotiva que has tenido mm -hmm. hasta la fecha como líder en, en educación allí en Tucson? Wow, mm -hmm. that's a good question. Um, yo creo que cada día que voy a mi escuela aprendo algo nuevo. Mm -hmm. Mi equipo, mis estudiantes me enseñan algo nuevo. Realmente me han enseñado cómo tener paciencia. Ni <laughs> menos que ni pensaba que iba a tener paciencia. <laughs> you, you seem so patient. Oh, no. <laughs> I got my moments. Um, but I think that una de las cosas más impactantes para mí is being able to just work with them, right? Mm -hmm. Having them come to, whether it's myself or my team, and say, you know what, I'm struggling today. Mm -hmm. I need help. Mm -hmm. um, I just need someone to talk to. Or you guys get me. That's one thing that a lot of our students are saying, you guys get me, because we've taken the time to understand our students and say, okay, they're coming through the door today. Maybe it's not such a great day. Mm -hmm. So we're going to surround them with support and love and say, you know what? Okay, you can't be in the classroom. There's another space that you can mm. be in, but still be learning. Yeah, yeah, of course. De este, y hablando de eso, um, ¿Cómo, como yo he tenido conversaciones con amigas que tienen a sus hijos y reconocen que algo pasa, pero tienen hijos en adolescencia o preteens que no saben hablar de sus emociones, mm -hmm. de, no saben cómo vocalizar lo que están pasando, and they just act out. Um, ¿Qué le podemos dar de tipo de consejos a los padres para que puedan tomar un poquito más las cosas en sus propias manos a los que quieren y ven, ¿qué pueden hacer ellos para estar un poquito más involucrados? So, una de las cosas que yo recomendaría es it's okay to be vulnerable. Yo creo mm. que como padres muchas veces no queremos ver que nuestros hijos 
when we make a mistake, it's really hard for me to say I'm sorry to my kids. Mm -hmm. But I have to be very mindful of, you know what? It wasn't okay for me to yell at you. It wasn't okay for yeah. me to do this. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, y muchas veces... Obviamente nuestros hijos han aprendido de nosotros mm -hmm. como how to show anger, how to show happiness, how to show all these emotions. So mini you is acting the same way you are. <laughs> right? Or they're trying to cope also. Exactly. And, and so to. ask yourself, what do you need when you're feeling these things? Mm -hmm. Your child probably needs the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's right? so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sí, porque puede ser tan sencillo como preguntarte a ti mismo. Porque como que en veces sí se complican las cosas cuando quieres saber qué necesita otra persona. Mm -hmm. But then if you go back to you, what, what I need. And I was reading in, in, con ansiedad, bien rapidito. One of the things about anxiety is separation. Mm -hmm. Separation from support. Yes. Entonces, eh, en cualquier manera que podamos encontrar eso, apoyo puede ayudar. Eso como padres dando eso mm -hmm. es lo que te estoy entendiendo. Ok, that's really good. Really Absolutely. good to know. Y para los estudiantes o los padres que quieran conectarse con el distrito de Chicanos por la Causa o específicamente Toltecali, ¿dónde se conectan? Our website is the best place. If you go to CPLC Community Schools, mm -hmm. you can find... Mm -hmm. My picture and just click on it and just send me an email. Perfecto. Perfecto. CPLCschools.org. Sí, yes, community schools. Community yes. schools. Sí, sí, CPLC sí, community schools. schools. Mm -hmm. Yes. Y entonces. Mi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> me levanto. Este es uno de mis uh, topics más, más favoritos: el trauma y psicología. Um, so me puedo quedar todas horas hablando de eso, pero sí. nos gusta terminar con un lado positivo y con un lado personal. Eh, ¿Cómo es que a uh, Dr. D le gusta, aparte de leer, which we have to get your favorite book, um, le gusta relajarse, how do you fill your cup, y cómo le traes sazón a tu vida? Great question. So I am, books are my life. They're okay. my happy place. They're also my support system. Oh, that's so good. Good. What is your favorite book again? Oh, too many. Oh. Way too many. <laughs> like I have the psychology list. one. If anybody wants to learn about psychology, which book? And ooh, why zebras? Why zebras? Why zebras don't get ulcers? Ooh. Okay, we'll write why that one down. Yes, that is a really good ulcers. book. It explains the psychology of stress. Oh, yes. It's okay. a really great book. Mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend it. Um, definitely books. I need that book time on a daily basis. My children, believe it or not, um, my kids keep me grounded. And you're going to sure. celebrate a wedding pretty soon. I am. Yay. My son's getting married. <laughs> and you're next Friday. So oh, thank you. Oh, yes. yes. Almost. Yes, 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 next yes. Friday. Um, honestly, I'm an introvert, so I am happy at home. <laughs> in my space I put a lot of work into my space so my family my mom is probably watching um, yes she's my greatest cheerleader my sisters for sure so my family I know that whatever happens I've called my mom more than once crying like I can't do this she's like yes you can <laughs> Yeah, bueno. she's got me. <laughs> ¿Y ella vive aquí en, en Arizona o en no, California? No, en California. En California. Ah, mm -hmm. saludos. Yes. Saludos. Saludos a la familia Diocares. Diocares. <laughs> Thank you. La, la familia argentina Diocares. Yes. Sí. Y no te trajiste tu Jersey Witch. Oh, another day we will have to discuss. Yes. Pero I gracias know. por habernos acompañado porque tiene el, el orgullo argentino. Oh, sí, obvio, sí. Obvio. Come on, soy argentina. ¿Y cuál, yes. ¿y cuál es? De las tres estrellas ya tiene las tres estrellas. Right? Yes, tres estrellas I have a Jersey que finalmente tiene the three stars for we've won the World oh, Cup three yeah. times. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, wow. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, I will. Ya yeah, después hablamos de Messi. Yes, whole another conversation. Oh, conversation. <laughs> en Argentina, ¿cómo las, uh, las maestras hacen que se caigan todos? Mm, I don't know. Si I can't can answer sí. that. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, ta, ta. <laughs> Les dicen, um, hay otro jugador, no, no me acuerdo cómo se llama, pero vamos a, voy a inventar un nombre. Ok, si, uh, si no se caigan... So, juegan como Marqués. Si se callan, juegan como Messi. <gasps> Todos se callan. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave it that. Bueno, doctora Mariela, doctor D, ha sido un placer. Igualmente. Ay, qué gusto que nos hayas acompañado el día de hoy. Gracias por manejar desde Tucson el día de hoy. Absolutely. Saludos a todos tus estudiantes. Yes. Eh, regresamos con más. Tenemos, no, no, no le cambio, por favor, porque tenemos a Jennifer Sánchez con unas historias que les van a encantar, se los aseguro. Regresamos. Mm -hmm. 
Hola, mi nombre es Yvonne Sosa. Eh, mi, el nombre de mi negocio es Balloons Deco by Yvonne. Soy cubana y pienso que como que no pude desarrollarlo. No había de dónde tener idea. Hace siete años que estoy en este país y, y siempre he, he seguido mi sueño de decorar. Yo creo que tuve mucha suerte porque estaba mirando la televisión, estaba mirando el noticiero. Eh, ahí miré a Laura Suárez y ella estaba eh, apenas empezando, estaba eh, llamando toda la comunidad dando todo 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 tipo de información y dio el número de teléfono y yo eh, rápido rápido le marqué creo que fui de las primeras en, en marcarle a ella y eso me cambió me cambió la vida eh, desde que desde que hice esa llamada pues siento que, que mi negocio cada vez va eh, mejorando cada duda que yo tengo cada, eh, cada cada cosa que no sé todo 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 de mi negocio todo me han ayudado Imagínate un lugar donde puedes ser tú misma. Donde aprender cosas nuevas es divertido. Donde puedes poner tus ideas a prueba. Donde puedes aprender de tus errores sin ser castigada. ¿Qué tal si hubiera un lugar donde puedes darle alas a tu creatividad? donde puedes viajar a otros mundos y regresar a tiempo para el almuerzo, donde sientes que te ven y te escuchan y tu salud mental es una prioridad. Imagínate un lugar donde tus maestros te animan a seguir tus pasiones y te apoyan desde el comienzo. Bienvenida al Girls Leadership Academy of Arizona. You can just talk to us if you want. ¿Qué tal? Gracias por continuar aquí en Empodérate de Chicanos por la Causa. Como les habíamos prometido a Jennifer Sánchez, tenemos el gusto de compartir esta tarde con la gerente de Asuntos Comunitarios de Intel. Muy buenas tardes, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bienvenida, Jennifer. Tuvimos un poquito de placer de hablar contigo un poquito antes del de show. So, sí. uh, yo te conocí en persona por primera vez. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Tienes un mensaje de poder y de fuerza que no nos podemos esperar con, para compartir. Pero ahorita quiero que empecemos con tu historia. Um, que ¿Nos puedes platicar un poquito sobre tu, uh, tu historia y cómo es, uh, de dónde eres y tus orígenes? Sí. sí. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, I'm from El Paso, Texas, mm -hmm. and I from was Teresa. born and raised, yep, mm -hmm. on the border, um, a product of the border. <laughs> I grew up in an at Hope zip code, um, at, at Hope, amazing public schools, um, doing the best that they could with the limited resources uh -huh. that they had. Um, both my parents are um, high school graduates, mm -hmm. and uh, my roots are actually from northern New Mexico. My Sanchez, I'm fifth generation from a wow. small town called Ojo Asarco oh, in northern okay, New okay. Mexico. Uh, that's where my grandparents came down. Um, my grandpa actually um, did agriculture in the Four Corners, oh. and then he came to Arizona to work in the mines. Yeah. So my dad mm -hmm. was actually born in Ray, Arizona. It doesn't exist anymore. Oh, yeah, I, I know. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Um, and wow. so uh, one of the things I want to say is like from a very young age, I knew I wanted to be a journalist. Mm. Um, I saw Kermit the Frog on <laughs> Sesame Street. Yeah. And then I saw Oprah Winfrey uh, growing up, coming home from school, watching TV. And that really just uh, my curiosity of wanting to know more about all things all the time. And um, I eventually went on to go to the University of Texas mm -hmm. in Austin, um, and that's where I studied journalism. And so the first career I had was in journalism. Oh. But you were a global citizen before you jump forward. Oh, so you you need to tell you a story. Let me tell the story of your yeah. high school. Tú like, dices una, una like, historia muy peculiar. Sí, o sea, sí. like you were watching the, 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 the school México. channel, and then you saw... Uh, an announcement and you said I yes. want to go there and I need to figure out a way to be there and tell us how that happened. So I um, again always going back to 
teachers, right? <laughs> I had always been um, curious about Australia. Mm. And so how the toilets go down the opposite way, I learned that in, oh, yeah. seventh, in that. seventh grade um, science. And then ah, so in high school, I, I saw a commercial that was like uh, AFS International, which is an exchange program. And so I went ahead and I... I called from a payphone, uh, 1-800-AFS. Kids, remember that. Yeah, I know, from a payphone. I didn't even have my cell phone. Yeah, when you say um, he can't even call you, but you, you took a payphone. I'm just kidding. I did. Oh, collect. And so, yeah, and then I was, um, I got the application, and as I needed to raise money, and at that time, um, I would say it was almost half of my parents' salary wow. of a year. Yes, you should go uh, and spend that yeah. semester. And uh, I went to my high school counselor, and I went to my principal, and I went to the PTA, and everybody was just like, mm, this is going to be challenging. Your family doesn't have the resources for it. And that's the first time I learned about being from a, socio, a lower socioeconomical background. And I had to go and look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> So you so, were told that you were poor and you couldn't make it. Pero Correct. Te doy esa es una oh experiencia la, y te, en la manera que te dijeron en la palabra que te dijeron no fue reconocida. No, no puedes no. compartir esa experiencia. Ya. Yeah. yeah, because I didn't know what it was, so I had to go home and look at the um, dictionary, and then I was like, oh, because we don't have a lot. But you don't know you don't have a lot when right. you're growing up. And you don't have That's a lot. You know. I had a house. Right. My parents were great providers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I was like, I don't know what I'm lacking. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in school. So I eventually went on to do um, an exchange program for a year in Australia, um, Western Australia in the Outback. Wow. wow. And so that was my first experience at 17. I turned 18 over there, so I got to oh. do something at 18. And um, it was awesome, you know. Uh, it, it just, I came back and I was like, I wanted to do something more. And I, mm. you know, and for me, um, journalism was always going to be that binder, how I could connect people mm. and how I could glue, glue people together through storytelling. Mm. Um, and I did, you know, I did something in Australia with a small, my hometown, small paper. I was in a small mining town of 3,000 people. Uh -huh. um, mm. And so anyways, moving into college, studying journalism, uh, my first career was uh, around 12 years going to different newspapers around the United States. Um, I got to work on some amazing newspaper staffs. And part of that was always being, if not the only, but the mm. not, only woman of color, but a Latina in several newsrooms. How did you feel about that? What, what, when you open the door and you figure out that that was a trend? Yes, and every yeah. one of I, them. You know, I um, one of the things I'm going to stress is how important that I know so many of our families are our cheerleaders. Sí. Mm -hmm. But as a first-generation college student and a first-generation professional, mm -hmm. your family Doesn't can't mean. help you. Like, they navigate. Mm -hmm. So they gave us values, and they gave us resilience, and they gave us... Um, this power to not let yourself be put down. The courage. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, at the same time, I had to depend on these journalism mentors and femtors mm. to help me navigate the newsroom, the journalism industry, newspapers. Um, and then I also had to rely on some huge allies, right? So when I went to the Utica Observer Dispatch, Uh, I'll go ahead and say I've had an awesome career. It started in 2000. Um, Mike Killian, who is still an editor in that region uh, yeah. for Gannett, he hired me. I was the only woman of color on a staff of about 50 people. Wow. Wow. And I was in Utica, upstate New York. I'm from El Paso. I had never seen snow. Um, the first snow we had was within two weeks. I cried. Wow. I ran into the newsroom crying. I said, I can't do this. Like, I'm from Texas. I drive a truck. <laughs> I, I was like, I can't. I need to go home. Like, and that was for so many years. I want to say at least my first five years um, 
out of college, I thought, you know, I need to be home. But then I thought, well, there's so many other things I want to do. Um, I went to different newspapers, like I said. I ended up at the um, doing a program at the Albuquerque Tribune. So I was in New Mexico. Um, New Mexico, it was awesome to be closer to home. Mm -hmm. I was at least in the Southwest, but I could write the stories I wanted to write about. Um, writing about, like, even at the state's uh, most struggling at Hope school, mm -hmm. how does a kid uh, become valedictorian? Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah. you know, that was a student I wrote about gosh, 15 plus years ago now, I'm still in contact with her. Wow. You know, she went on to graduate from University of New Mexico. Then she went, uh, she's an engineer now. Um, and so it was like all of these stories that were helping me as I was sharing these stories. It was also the first time as I started to learn more and more about my own culture. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. even though I had gone through um, K through 12 and then through higher education, I felt like I don't know anything about my culture, mm. you know, and then mm -hmm. it was always weird. Like, how do we identify my Mexican American and my Mexican and my, you know, and so after doing a lot of that own reading for myself is that, sí. you know, I identify as Chicana, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I identify okay. as Chicana um, because I have to stand for something for my family that has been here fighting for generations mm -hmm. for access mm -hmm. right, and mm -hmm. inclusion. Speaking of that, um, I, Jennifer, I, I feel that I know, not only I feel mm. that you understand the power of being the first and the role and responsibility that that means. But um, there, I think there are two things. Um, the platform that you look for right mm -hmm. throughout your career and then to utilize your voice. You're not afraid to say what it needs to be said. What do you think board, be, being board, me, board members are important to be able to do that and, and open spaces and create um, um, equal access. Let me, so I'll follow up from after being a journalist. Um, one of the stories that changed what I wanted to do was um, the largest immigration raid in U.S. history at the time happened in December 2006. And that's when ICE rounded up mm -hmm. about 1,400 undocumented workers that were working in SWIFT come in the swift meat packing plants. Yes. One of them was at in Utah. At the time I was at the Salt Lake Tribune and I followed that story. I was there for the week of just devastation of that story in Utah. It was about 150 undocumented workers that were all sent back to um, a town called La Huacana in Michoacan. Mm -hmm. I went to Michoacan, uh, got to report from there and that experience, I was like, I can no longer keep on, like, as powerful as these stories are, I can't keep on um, writing these stories without doing something uh -huh. about it. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really look, started looking into policy. So at this point, um, really was trying to get into the Kennedy School at Harvard, couldn't get into Harvard. Uh, and so I ended up getting my master's in public administration at the University of Utah. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, going into like, how do I work on strategy mm -hmm. of like, how can I change something? Right. Um, how can I change the system, this institution that was already set up in a way that didn't include me? Right. Um, so going to your question is that that's where I'm now um, 20 years into my career as a journalist, working in as a lobbyist, working in nonprofits um, that I now ended up at Intel. Right. Like 20 plus years into my career doing community affairs in a way that I help put the strategy on representation around a global company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm constantly looking at data and how does this data reflect our community? So, um, so this is something, you know, that I've been talking about uh, for this Hispanic Heritage Month is, you know, we've been here for 247 years 
And it just so happens that we've had Hispanic Heritage Month for 55 years now, uh, but every day I live as a Thank American. You. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We've had this. We're yeah, not <laughs> discovered just yeah, between um, nine fifteen to ten fifteen <clears throat> every year, October fifteen. Exactly. Like we are, we live. We are this Hispanic heritage. <laughs> every day. Yes, every, every day. day. That takes every me. Day. So that takes me to this question, which is. Como has, como ha visto, like, how have you seen your life affected by your cultural background? Well, I'll, let's talk about um, how it's been brought based on my lived experience. And then now live my lived experience, my professional, my expertise in mm -hmm. Policy, communications, marketing. Now I have all of this to bring to the table, right? And mm -hmm. I always make a space for myself at the table. <laughs> yes, we uh, have to. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that all of that has now given me the opportunity to one of the programs that I created at Intel in partnership with YWCA Metropolitan Phoenix is the Equity in STEAM initiative. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is to close the Grand Canyon size gap mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. girls mm -hmm. and students of color in STEAM. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So our program is a grant. So it's for grassroots organizations and teachers who are doing culturally relevant STEAM activities because we need our students, our kids to see themselves in these STEAM activities. Absolutely. They already know so much. What and are some cultural STEAM activities? Okay, so it's how kids see themselves in STEAM. Mm. So when they go to a science class, we already been doing STEAM activities. That's not new, that's been happening. Mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm those had led us to the numbers that we have. Mm, In the United States, we have uh, the Latinas and black women make up a growing 16% of the population. Mm -hmm. Yet, they only make up 4% mm. of US wow. engineers and scientists. Wow. Right? right. Yes. So, and we know research shows that By grade four, a girl has to say, I can be a STEAM professional. Yeah. So what we want to encourage our parents is early childhood. You might not think at nine months old, reading a science book, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. One example we can use are um, like the, the Million Miles Away that came mm -hmm. out with on the Jose Hernandez, mm -hmm. you know, watching that movie as a family mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and at a young age, because by grade four, your child has to be able to identify a STEAM profession, whatever that is, scientists, chemists, biologists, um, what have you. So that with the program, Equity and STEAM Initiative, um, we give a grant for those projects or programs. And then that cohort comes together, those organizations, those teachers come together to do an equity leadership series. Fantastic. So how do we create inclusive cultures in companies, right? How do we, okay, well, a lot of our tech companies yeah. don't have female representation. So how do we change that culture? Yeah, y hacerlo and alcanzable, exactamente. exactamente. Hablarlo y hacerlo alcanzable. Because many times you see these uh, movies, you see scientists, you know about research, and the families may know about it, but it seems like miles, a thousand miles away, right? So if, if you create and bring in the conversations, our families to understand, well, this is the path. See, sí. There is a path. Sí. And here I am. I look like you mm -hmm. and I did it. So you do too. Sí. Um, we have programs like that, our community center, and, and they're, they're so impactful to see and start such a young age because for many years, the program started until sí. high school. Uh -huh. And by then it was too late. You need sí. to engage the parents as well, not eh, only the students at in high school. Por no hacer spoiler alert, pero a million miles away. I'm in love with that movie porque también toca en eso. Um, en la, ma la maestra Mrs. Young eh, es la maestra que hace que hace spoiler alert, es la maestra <laughs> que hace identify algo en el en el niño at an early age. But she didn't just 
tell que she then involved the family. Ajá. So, en key. Key, que, mm -hmm. que muchas veces no vemos esas uh, acts that of service that, that they do behind doors, but it's recognizing when there's someone that has potential and taking that extra step to say, let me connect you. Right? right, that sounds like what you're doing right exactly. now. Exactly. So let me give you one a great example I'm excited about for Arizona. We had an Intel employee mm -hmm. in Oregon. She's from California. Her and a friend, another Intel colleague, were having lunch, and they're like, wouldn't it be cool to teach steam through mariachi music? Oh. Wow. So neither one of them play an idea. instrument. Wow. Neither one of them know about music. They created a summer camp for students in Oregon study mariachi to learn learn about steam and mariachi wow. through video, through this, through that. And then they get to go and do an experience living on a college campus for a week. Okay. Oh so we, what we did is that we connected them to a nonprofit here, um, cultural coalition who mm -hmm. applied for a grant to do a pilot wow. of the mariachi in steam program in Arizona. Wow. So they piloted wow. it this past summer. It was awesome. So students came for an hour to do STEAM, and then they did an hour of mariachi and trying to connect those dots. Um, and I say, you know, what we want students to see is that they already know STEAM is not something foreign. STEAM is not outside in the galaxy. STEAM right. is happening in our homes. When you're cooking with your mom, when you're making tamales with mm -hmm. your mom, right? Like for me, um, I'm very a strong advocate of doing my events eventually low riders in steam project students and families to see themselves you're already doing it the, you're going to be a mechanical engineer you know how to paint that's yes, chemistry yeah. so, and so, we were talking about that sorry to interrupt you no, but no, no. just really quick we veronica was also talking about how her um she has a family member who he is so good with computers, but he doesn't really like, he doesn't connect with the academic, um, the structure of learning this mm -hmm. engineering program, right? But if maybe he needed, he needs a way to connect up with the this, this STEAM. And para los que no saben, nos puedes uh, decir qué significa STEAM? Porque si oh, hay gente que I no. <laughs> so you probably heard about STEAM in school, science, technology, Engineering. Engineering. Engineering and mathematics. And, um, and now we add the A, and our CEO at Intel has a, been a huge advocate of making sure that that A is representative yep. because A is arts, culture. And so how do we include that, specifically when we talk about AI, exactly. right? That human exactly. experience um, in technology. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. So we can feel your passion, um, Jennifer, and, and you shared that knowledge and especially a mentorship opportunities that you constantly do. Sí. And one nugget of information that I'd love for you to share that we were just talking about it. It's about your interpretation of um, the um, uh, the culture. Uh, oh, my goodness. It's the <laughs> imposter syndrome. Oh, sí, sí. Uh, yes. So your somebody, perspective on it is my really perspective good. of imposter syndrome. <laughs> imposter syndrome was trying. Somebody was trying to throw it down my throat when I was in graduate school mm -hmm. over 10 years ago. And I didn't believe in the concept. Um, and so I have uh, been very vocal that I don't believe in imposter syndrome because I think if spaces were representative of what we look like in whatever community, if you wouldn't have imposter syndrome because people would look like you, yep. your bosses, your colleagues, then you there would be no imposter syndrome. Um, and that's really the at the root of when people think they're having imposter syndrome. No, you're not. Um, if we were more representative of, again, any, whether it's the LGBT community or uh, a religion or what have you, if you had people who look like you, you wouldn't have that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what I, yes. and can I just follow up by saying like in Arizona where we're easily a growing third yes. of the population. Yes. Yes. That's important. A call to action at times is just, you know, make sure that your panel looks like 
a third of the state. Yes. Latino. Incluir. If you have a board, make sure it looks like a third of the state. It's really but simple. But be conscious about that too. Sam, you yeah. have right? to be not intentional. Just to, not just to check, to check, check the, the box, box. Uh-huh. because you need to listen to those voices. You need to understand their perspective si. and take them into account in making those decisions for that particular either company or organization. Yeah, I think that's the key. I think that en este momento que estamos y con la tecnología que tenemos es muy rápido reconocer cuando una entity está trabajando con nomás haciendo check un bo- checkbox en uh-huh. ethnicity en cualquier ethnic- ethnicity que sea marginalized um, the inclusion of the last minute thought that uh, just we need to look diverse so let's include this but those companies who really take the time to understand the value to uh, a- a- hacer invest in, in estas comunidades en, de verdad entienden cómo se a, habla a esta comunidad porque ha habido mucho crecimiento en tratando de conectar con la audiencia hispana últimamente eh, en, en estados que tienen uh, muchos hispanos y latinos so everybody's trying to um, capitalize on the latino en la next market however you want to call it um, pero somos muy uh, estamos muy atentos a que es algo que se está cambiando por beneficio o porque de verdad se está cambiando la idea y la mentalidad tras estas corporaciones um, una cosa que dijiste que um, se me hizo muy importante para mí una de las maneras cuales tú has llegado tu perspectiva ha cambiado ha llegado a un punto de decir ya ahora piensas así um, porque has estado breaking down these barriers of being the only Latina in a room how has that changed you where are you now what do you think when you go into these rooms as the only Latina yeah um I, it's such a privilege and it's such an honor that I know that I'm representing and I know I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. And so every time you are the only Latina in the room, know that you are not alone. You are sitting, standing on generations who open those doors for you. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, that's why I just envision myself with, you know, like. My grandmother, who didn't have an opportunity um, to go to school as much as she wanted to be an English teacher. Um, And so, you know, that you're not alone, Mm -hmm. you know, and so you're just there to show up and represent who you are, your culture, your background, and, you know, and have pride in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll say that being at Intel, that has been, you know, navigating the corporate culture. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been also, you know, I have had to learn that it takes your managers and it takes your leadership to let you be your authentic self. And it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so when you Mm -hmm. get in those spaces, you need to move on. Yes. Right. You don't need to show up and try to teach someone, someone try to change somebody. Right. You move on. Because there are going to come a team that values you on who you are, right? And your whole cultural background. Exactly. And how you can be an inclusive, authentic leader. And I'm just really blessed that I can do that at Intel. Yeah, absolutely. And then you... And then don't don't be afraid. I could see that of, you know, gravitating into a different area. Oh, see. And not only geographically, but also career wise, that you can make a difference and an impact and, and switch and switch gears. You've done it a few times. How yeah. has that, that transition been or that decision from being a journalist to policy to campaign uh, nonprofit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think that, you know, one of the now we're looking back, one of my superpowers is um being able to have empathy, Mm. one, in any line of work industry um, and showing up as who I am and valuing people, 
Mm. And so when I was a journalist, I valued the stories I was mm -hmm. changing, right? Um, when I was in nonprofits working with my students, I worked as a gang intervention specialist. Wow. And I valued my families, right? And just trying to always come from a place of like, don't judge, don't judge. Like these students, right, have so much potential if someone just lets them know who they are, um, right? If they have pride in where they're from. Um, then going into policy and then later on to national politics, you know, serving on the Hillary campaign. I just wanted to make sure like you, uh, Muhad, I was just, again, first generation. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. was like, hey, if these opportunities, like, why can't I do it? See, si. Right? Why can't I do it? So um, I did serve for the Hillary campaign in Iowa, and that's where I really had to, you know, I just was like, I just want to see a woman president. See. Like, can I see a woman you president in man, my yeah. lifetime? That's where you put um, actions behind your words. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Let's make and it happen. And I think that's the thing that, compare, ya empezar a hacer rap, but I think that's the thing that um, makes the difference. There's, hay muchos de nosotros en la comunidad que ven y que nos sentimos con ese llamado de decir, quiero hacer más, quiero dar más, mm -hmm. quiero uh, mm -hmm. averiguar esta trayectoria porque mi comunidad mm -hmm. la necesita. Y lo único que se necesita para empezar es la acción. And we make it so more complicated nope. than it mm -hmm. is. But your story mm -hmm. is such a great depiction of what that looks like. Gracias por ver compartido por partes vulnerables. Y me casi me hacías llorar también a mí, <laughs> pero se siente cuando vives una vida que está eh, intertwined with your culture. Mm -hmm. Y de este, um, para to cerrar esto en un lado positivo, Hey, uh, Jennifer, ¿cómo es que tú llenas tu vaso? What do you do para traerle el sazón a tu vida? Oh, well, I love the conversation that we were talking about right now with trauma sí. and um, being trauma informed. And uh, eventually I'll do the trauma informed steam activities. <laughs> so be oh, yeah. okay, I love well, that. I would say that um, <laughs> I, I am so grateful for the benefits right? That I also have at a company that I can um, meet with my therapist, mm -hmm. right? That I work on that childhood trauma that I know and learning in my 40s how to set boundaries, mm -hmm. um, how to value myself. Right. Um, all of those things came very later in life. Mm. Um, and so that's one thing I do do. Um, I love traveling. I'll go anywhere as long as I can. I mean, has I'll, in mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I've done a lot of travel all over the world and I love connecting people. Like that's really, um, I love just connecting people. I think everybody brings value mm -hmm. to a table, mm -hmm. regardless of formal of education, everyone brings value. So parents, you have to remember that everything you are without any formal education or trade or whatever, you are still bringing value because those things you can't teach. Yeah. Right. You yeah. can't get a master's mm -hmm. in how to be an amazing leader. Mm -hmm. You can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you learn so much of that from our families. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And from people like you. Exactly. Thank you so much for Gracias. coming over um, to our show today. It's been weeks in the planning, so we sí. appreciate your time. We work and, for and you. Leadership. Ah, yes, we work to get you here. <laughs> my goodness, the stories, it, it, it's, it's been, you're an ins true inspiration, fundraising, sí. cupcake fundraising, to be Gracias. able to get to your goals earlier on. Yeah. And then um, and then, and, and then the, the position that you have sí. with this global company as well. We appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. And we yeah. have to give a shout out to my all my family and friends sí. in El yeah. Paso, Texas. Oh, yes, yes. El Chuco, yeah, Paso. El Chuco. El Chuco um, who made me the chingona that I am. That's exactly. Right. That's Gracias por ser la mujer que eres. Gracias por la fuerza que llevas a través representando la cultura. I back you up and I send you my energy <laughs> porque así como tu trayectoria de journey breakers, uh, we need that. So, que hagan muchas como tú y a los que nos escuchen que quieran saber más información de Jennifer Sánchez Sánchez we are going to share all of her information so you can yeah, follow her yeah find her on LinkedIn she'll yes. respond right away sí <laughs> <laughs> and Gracias. for information on the programs for Intel yeah. we're going to post it on, on the comments if we haven't done so already again Jennifer thank you so much it's been a pleasure this has been an amazing Gracias. episode 16th episode de Chicanos por la Causa Empodérate hasta la próxima 
Los Premios Esperanza para Maestros Latinos de Chicanos por la Causa está orgulloso de honrar a Michael Domínguez y Perla Apodaca de Phoenix, Teresa Villaverde de Superior y Alicia Isabel Wong de Tucson, Arizona. Visite cplc.org diagonal esperanza para ver las historias inspiradoras de cómo están sembrando semillas de esperanza. Gracias a nuestros patrocinadores Cox Communications, SRP y Denton's Global Advisors.